What's up, modern steaders? Today we're working on making our decking for our mobile chicken coop. I bet you the chickens would like to come out while we're doing this. Don't remember exactly what we have over here for wood. This bundle right here is leftover siding, and then this other bundle right here is leftover pine boards from when we did the inside of the house, and that's what I plan on using for making the decking. We're gonna have to go through it and see what we can use. So when trying to do projects like this, it's kind of fun to go through and figure out what you have and how you can get it to work for what you want to do. I'm hoping I have enough of this shiplap board to make the decking and then we're going to oil both sides with a penetrating oil to keep the moisture from it so it won't rot. We got a good start right there on that pile. We got some really long ones. It's a weird measured trailer. The width of it is like... 72 and a half and most of these boards are say 72 and a quarter so we won't have exactly what we need but we'll make it work That should be a good spot to work on it, not far from the sore and not too far from the wood pile. Work smarter, not harder. We're curious to see what the chickens do for the first time we take out the saw. Let's see. Oh, I thought they'd run off. Me too. You babies are boring. I know, right? I thought they were going to run off and... Uh-huh. Nope. They looked up and said, what are you doing? And that's it. Ah, ah, ah. Working outside like this is reminding me when we built our house back in the summer of 2015. I wish we had the time. We could have videotaped some of it as we were building it, but we had a quick time frame. We had to be in the house within three months, so I was kind of just hammer down and get it done, and we'd shut. And then we'd start sharing our experience with you guys after we had the house built and we were in it. Just trying to do a quick little layout so we know how many boards we're going to need roughly and trying to use up the ones that are an inch short lengthwise that are already cut in between the wheel wells we'll have to cut those down so we're probably going to use four of those which will be nice i'll go ahead and i'll cut those now down to a nice length and we'll keep on going one of the things I did save was the inner fenders. And this way we can kind of figure out where they all need to go. So if we set that like that. So if we come to about here on both sides, we'll be good. Maybe 51. That goes a little bit of an overhang and it won't affect the wheels.
we needed two more pieces of flooring and we had two more pieces left. So I love it when a project comes together and you're trying to be resourceful and just use up what you have around the property. So let's cut these two and we'll put them down. Pluto is a little bit jealous. I don't know if you can see her in the house or not. Let's see. Yeah. And ready? There are the ducks. She wants to come out. Yeah, you're fine to step on them, just don't go on the very edge. They're not even stable in this Pluto, be nice to them. Do you like that? You want to help me? You don't want to help me? I just need to help numbering them. Pluto. Numbering them? Yeah, yep. Them. Before I screw them all down, I want to oil them. And we have them set the way that we're going to have them set when we build the walls on top of them. This is the upside. And the other side is the down. It's going to be down. But I want to oil both sides of the pine so that way I don't got to worry about it rotting out. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to number each board because we got it laid out and we kind of got a nice placement for it. So we're just going to put a number on each board and I'll take them up, turn them upside down, and we'll oil them. So do I do one, two, three, four? You got it, ma'am. <laughs> Make sure it's a big number so I can see it. The bigger the better. Awesome. How many boards do we got? Two. Awesome. Thank you. I'm just using Flood, the wood care specialist, the UV protectant. And the reason why I'm using this is I had this given to me. I didn't pay anything for it. I have three cans this one's been open so two and three quarter cans and this is what i'll be using on the outside of the coop the outside of the coop i don't know what i would be doing if i didn't have this but for the bottom of this floor i'd just probably be using used motor oil that'll protect it from the weather and from rotting and making it last longer it i actually would i actually think that used motor oil would be better for the environment and for the animals rather than pressure treated If you had a sprayer, you'd probably be better off spraying it on. You might get a better coverage. This is working out really nice. This oil is soaking in good with the rough lumber. Getting good coverage. And we have other things to do shortly, so we had just about enough time to get this done. And we'll give it time to dry, and then tomorrow we'll come out here. And I'll be able to flip the boards over, screw them down, and we'll go pick up the lumber to make the walls. And then we got to decide if we want to use some leftover siding from the house to side this. Or if we want to wait, we're supposed to be getting a bunch of rough sawn lumber. If we want to wait for when the lump, that rough sawn lumber shows up and use that. So I think what we'll do is we'll build the walls from 2x4s, put the roof on, put the roof rafters on, and then we'll put some tin on the roof. And then we'll end up doing the sides. That's where we're going to have to end today's video. I'm pretty excited with where we got. We'll let this dry. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and I'll screw it down. We'll have the flooring done. And I'm getting really excited to see the finished product of the mobile chicken coop. This is going to be great. I'm going to have a nice mobile chicken coop. We can move around the property and we'll use the poultry netting. And we can let the chickens go in a good size area and they'll be able to have free range and have a nice secure coop to go into at night. And you could also use this mobile coop for a goat house. I am keeping my eyes open for as many of these pop-up campers I can find that we could salvage the frame. I think this is gonna be a great little structure. You could use it for goats, you could use it for meat birds, you can use it for laying hens. It's gonna be very versatile. So if you guys like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, don't forget to share it, it really helps. Leave in the comments down below what you think about having a mobile chicken coop or a mobile goat pen. I'd love to hear what you guys think and if you already have some mobile coops, let me know how they're working out for you. 
So until next time, guys, we'll see you right back here at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.